Hello, 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 and welcome back to Alice Talks Football. Welcome back to a live Manchester United news, transfer news, general news show. We've got a massive boost. We've got positive news. We've got interesting reports coming out about Manchester United. The big boost on the injury front, Mason Mount, Maguire, Hoyland, wan Bissaka, all of them return. Martinez, very, very close to return as well, which will be massive for United and massive for this final stretch of maybe can we catch Tottenham and Villa? Unlikely, but at least cementing sixth place, which is the Europa League, because I'd rather be in the Europa League than the Conference League. But we do have confirmation that a deal is done from Ben Jacobs. The deal is done for Dan Ashworth. It's a matter of when, not if. That's sort of the situation with Manchester United and a number of deals. But we also have interesting insight about the conversation that went down between Ten Hag and Ineos. And what Ineos' message was to Ten Hag reportedly, you know, there's some reports are saying they're going to give them time. Some reports are saying Ten Hag's going to go. What was the reported message? What is the reported stance? And why all of a sudden are Manchester United exploring, making contact with Zinedine Sudan? Could this be related to the Ten Hag situation? Are you not looking at Sudan? Is there a chance? I'm going to be honest, don't think we've got a chance of getting Sudan, but I will get into the Sudan news and a few stories and more. So big up everybody in the chat. Big up everybody as well. Good up everybody. Some people haven't been here a while. Big up to Gaz. Big up to everybody tuning in. Hope you feel better soon. Gaz, I'm going to dive right, right into the news, right into the stories, because I'm not going to be able to go live for super long, as I'll probably have to end about 6 30. So we're going to get right into the news and power through. So in terms of the massive injury boost, it was said that Mason Mount is back in Manchester United first team training. Mason Mount is expected to be fit and ready to return to action after the international break as he's now back in training, said Romano. It's also been said that Sandro Martinez should be back in time or just after the international break as well, which will be two massive boosts because Mason Mount, I think, yes, he needs to prove himself. Yes, the signing's been underwhelming, but while I wouldn't have signed Mason Mount in the summer and I didn't think it was a priority, there's no doubt that Mason Mount has the capabilities to play the football Ten Hag wants to play and we will be a better team with Mason Mount in the team. The question is, can he play with Bruno? That's the big question. I'm not sure, but I think signing that's going to really, really improve Manchester United, I think, and I think he will show some worth if he can stay fit. He's going to be a bit rusty to begin with. We've got to give him time. Lissandra Martin is coming back after the international break. We know what Lissandra Martin brings. wan coming back is also massive because although wan hasn't been great this season, at least we have two fit full-backs and Delo can just play left-back rather than playing Lindelof left-back. I'd rather have Delo left-back and wan right-back. Uh, Hoyland and Maguire could be fit as well. Maguire gives much-needed depth at centre-back because Martinez is out, but obviously you have Martinez and Brown are the centre-back pairing but Maguire and Evans are good options to have and then Rasmus Hoyland do I even need to explain why Rasmus Hoyland being back for the Liverpool game is massive he's a focal point he's brilliant he's amazing he's Rasmus Hoyland I absolutely love him so some really positive news in regards to injuries but I want to talk about the conversation that went down between Ineos and Ten Hag according to Ben Jacob. So we're going to get into that. Let me just look at the comments as well. Happy birthday to your mum. Martinez is the player that we need fit 100%. Uh, am I the only one sceptical about Sedania? Pretty much the best club in all history in his Madrid turnover and still lost the lead to Simone. No one near close to the best squad. I think Sedan is a great manager. I don't think Sedan to Man United is going to happen. I understand why Ines are looking at Sedan. I think he's a fantastic manager, but I think Manchester United aren't a Galactico team that's got Galactico players that need to win titles. Manchester United need to rebuild and eventually win titles. The question is, can Sudan get the best out of average players? That's the big question. We, you know, Sudan's a great manager and with great players, he will achieve great success, he'll win trophies. Is he the right man for a Man United rebuild or is he someone that you'd want maybe two, three years down the line to just complete that final step? And and, and I get that 100%. For me, I would like to stick with Ten Hag, give him another year because I loved the football Ten Hag played at Ajax. I watched a lot of Ajax. I thought it was amazing. I wanted Ten Hag and I think, well, people are saying they want Nagelsmann because they're fed up with the football Ten Hag plays and Nagelsmann plays great football. But what's to say Nagelsmann comes, comes to United and plays bad football? We wanted Ragnit because he played good football. He came to United and played bad football. We wanted Ten Hag because he played good football, came to United and played bad football what's not to say the next manager plays bad football so i've always had the stance of i'd give tenog another year even though i've criticized tenog a lot i just want to see him give them another year i uh, do like the sporting manager i do like sedan but the question with sedan is as brilliant as the manager as he is does he need like money does he need the squad to achieve that success or can he raise the floor he's a ceiling raise but can he raise the floor that is the big question around it klopp is known for getting the best out of players pep is known for making a super squad a super team 
Klopp's never getting the best out of players. And I think if I had to choose between Pep or Klopp, believe it or not, I would choose between, for Klopp for Man United because I think starting from the bottom, Klopp's a better manager, less of a budget. But if you've got the elite players, maybe Pep is. So that's the question. Is Sedan more more in that box? That's a big question as well. As uh, Madrid sucked before Tat Sedan turned it around. Yeah, I mean, Sedan's a brilliant manager. Let, let's be honest. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's worth giving to... Unless there's actually reliable sources saying Sedan's going to happen and lots of, lots of sources indicating it. Um, I think there's not much really talking about Sedan to United. I don't think much will happen. Just wanted to cover the news. Uh, but look, he's a brilliant manager as well. Stop sacking managers and trust Tenag. And I think maybe Ineos might sit there and think, you know what, this team sacks managers every two years. They're getting nowhere. No manager's playing good football. Maybe we need to give the manager time as well. And Tenog did win a trophy in his first season as well. I agree with Klopp, won the Bundesliga with Dortmund as well. Dortmund as well. Like if I had to choose between Pat and Klopp, I'd for United because where we're at right now and what Klopp can do. So... What have Ineos reportedly said to Ten Hag? What's Ineos' sort of message to Ten Hag been as of late? It was said that Ineos told Eric Ten Hag that it's up to him to prove himself. Nothing is predetermined and that he'll be judged in the summer. They, are also, told, they also told him there are no guarantees that he will stay. That was Ineos' message to Ten Hag. They said it's up to him to prove it himself. Nothing is done. He'll be judged in the summer. It's up to him. So what is sort of being relayed by multiple sources? And look, I'm not going to act like these journalists, everything these journalists say is correct. I don't think these journalists really have an idea of what's going on. There's been about 10 different manager names linked to United. Some sources saying it's already agreed that Ten Hag will go. Some sources are saying there hasn't been a decision. Some sources are saying it's media spin. It's for attention like Romano. Some sources are saying they've agreed that Ten Hag is going to stay. I don't think the media really have a strong indication of what's going to go on with Tenag. But my feeling and sense is just using common logic and what the Probits Romanos and the reliable sources have said is that Ineos have said to Tenag, no matter what, you'll have to the end of the season. We can't guarantee you'll be here next season, but we haven't made a decision on sacking you. We just want to see what you can do. Ineos is saying probably it's not super results based. It's more about the process. Every comment that Ratcliffe has made publicly, he's made it very clear. It's the environment that's the problem. It's the structure that's the problem. That's what we want to change first. Ineos might have to say, you know what, the football we played this season was awful and they might feel that they have no choice but to sack Ten Hag. You know, 11 losses in the league, that, that is unforgivable. But they might look past that and say, look, they're always sacking managers. They're not changing the players. They're not changing the environment. Let's just focus on changing the players and the environment this window because we could sack Ten Hag later down the line if we need be. We've never given a manager the chance. Um, but ultimately, I think Ten Hag's told you're not going to be sat in the season. If we are sat, it's going to be the end of the season. So you're going to be here to the end of the season. Do what you can. We're going to judge you on what you do. Your chances of keeping your job off what you do. But reportedly, it's not too much about results. It's about if Ineos believe that Ten Hag is capable of playing the way they want United to play. Ineos don't want to be going through one manager to another manager, building one squad, building another squad. Ineos want to build. And this is why Dan Ashworth and Omar Barada coming in. And this is why Dan Ashworth and Omar Barada coming in is so important. Because Ineos want to build something in terms of a Man United way. They're going to sign players to play a way of football like Brighton do. So when Potter left and De Zerbi came in, they were still playing the same kind of football. Obviously a few tweaks, but they were buying players for Potter. And because De Zerbi coming in told to play this kind of football, he already had the players there at Brighton to pick up where Potter left off. And in fact, do even better. The stance of Ineos right now, is of course sort of the situation of we want Man United to play this certain way. Dan Ashworth and Omar Barada coming in to do that. Is Tenar capable of coaching and managing a team to play that way if he has the players available? They'll look at what he did at Ajax and go, yeah, but then they might look at what he's done at United and say, well, he's regressing. What's that? And I think whoever the next manager is, it's who they believe is going to play the way that they want to play. Uh, but I think Ineos have said to Tenar, show me what you can do to the end of the season. We're not going to sack you and bring in an interim. That would be stupid. We can't guarantee that you stay, but there is a chance it's there. Now, Paul Hurst added some very interesting comments to this that I do want to get into. And Paul Hurst said this. He said, Ineos' decision on Eric Tenog's future will be partly influenced by the cost of his dismissal, his departure and that of his staff that would cost in excess of 10 million. They said Tenog is well respected among those in the Ineos hierarchy and there is a feeling that he has not been helped by the structure surrounding him. There is an acceptance, however, that Tenog will be on shaky ground if United fail to qualify for the Champions League. A host of intermediaries have started touting their clients for the manager position in the chase. Manchester United decide to change is required in the summer. But if there's a feeling in some quarters that United United, that United would only be fair for Tenog to be judged once new owners have come in and have their preferred structure in place. So I want to get into Paul Hurst's comments because Paul Hurst is a very, very respectable source of information. And unlike other journalists, Paul Hurst isn't just touting a load of new manager names out there. Paul Hurst is saying some interesting things. 
Paul Hurst is essentially saying, you know, to sack Ten Hag, it's going to cost more than £10 million. And while I don't want Manchester United's decision on Ten Hag to be about financial, I want Ineos to do what they believe is best. If they believe ke keeping Ten Hag and, and having a good board around him and getting rid of the players is the best decision, and, and then I want them to do that. If they think that sacking Ten Hag is the best decision, then do that. Don't keep him, because, even though you don't want him because it saves money. That's what the Glazers would do. I think ultimately, you know, that's what the worst case scenario. I want Tenal to say stay, but I don't want Tenal to be staying because Ineos wants to save money. That's Glazernomics. There's a feeling that obviously Sacking Tenal is going to be at least 10 million, probably in that 15 million pound mark. And considering it's going to be at least 10 million to get Dan Ashworth in, which we're going to get into because that deal's done, but it's not done yet. Um, it, because that it's going to be like, well, considering the fee they've got to play for Omar Barada, potentially Doogie Friedman, potentially Dan Ashworth, potentially how much they've got to spend this summer and how hard it is to sell, maybe they will keep Ten Hag. Maybe they will. I think if we don't get the Champions League, it's going to be shaky for Ten Hag, but I don't think we'll get the Champions League because Villa and Spurs are a lot better than us. But there's a feeling at Ineos that, do you know what? Like, this guy's had been in a poor environment where multiple good managers have failed. He was brilliant at Ajax. He played good football at Ajax last season. He achieved some success before this injury crisis. He's not been helped with injuries. We know the problem at United is they don't have the players to play good football. No manager's going to come and play good football. But Ten Hag could be doing better despite the injuries, despite not having the best players. The fact that only Sheffield United have conceded more goals than us is poor. But I think Ineos might look at it and say it's going to cost us at Ten Hag. He's not been given a fair time in this new structure, in this new ownership. Lots of managers are coming and failed. We've got the players to change. We've got the whole structure to change. Is changing the manager that same window too much? I think Ineos will be looking at that. I think Ineos will have that in mind. And I think unless the season ends awful, if we do end up finishing sixth, I think there's a, there's a chance Ten Hag stays because although sixth isn't where United should be, it's not like we're finishing 13th or 14th for the like poor, poor like finishing sixth. There's still, you know, there's something to build there as well. So I thought they were some interesting comments and points thrown about as well. Uh, big up everybody in the chat. Uh, Nadar says, love your channel. Appreciate that as well. Fix midfield first. You know what? A lot of people saying striker needs to be the first signing. Centre back needs to be the first signing. For me, it needs to be a top um, technical midfielder that's comfortable playing as a six. For me, that's what it's got to be as well. And maybe someone a bit more physical with some height because we lack that as well. Carson says, I'm and Eric Tenal again, but if a new, but if a new manager um, then take one from the outside and not doing doing okay in a small team, it should be what one used to handle big players 100%. If we bring in a manager, we need someone that's got experience rebuilding with experience with big names as well. But um, hopefully Ten Hag does stay. Uh, Dutch managers have been awful in the Premier League, but Ten Hag's not been given too much time. Style of play matters, but I doubt if if play improves, um, we finish 10th. Eric Ten Hag keeps his job. Uh, yeah, the thing is, if play improves, do we get poor results? Are we playing badly because this is the only way to grind out results is, is the question you can ask for Ten Hag as well. And the only reason I keep Ten Hag is because the new manager will not do clear out here at 12 to 18 months. We need to have the clear out. We need to have the clear out and the structure change before we change the manager, it feels like, as well. Uh, United finishing ahead of Newcastle, lost to Chelsea. Newcastle, apparently, Anthony Gordon's out for the rest of the season, which would be a massive loss for Newcastle as well. A West Ham drop points. I think Man United can easily get um, sixth place if we can pull ourselves together. I don't see us catching Villa or Spurs. I think they have a few more trickier games than us, Villa and Spurs. Um, Villa are going to be in Europe, but I think they're just a lot better than us as well. Uh, Alex B said, Eric Tenog's final season at Ajax, he had nearly plus 80 goal difference. Current squad surely main issue. And, and this is why I want Tenog to be given another year, because I think people are talking about the amazing football Nagas when plays, but is he going to be able to play that football in those formations at United? No. Ragnick played great football. You know, getting impressing. We'll talk about how Ragnick would line up Man United, but he came to Man United and he couldn't play this great, brilliant, amazing football because of the lack of players available as well. So, yeah, Alice, do you think Mertz was in Barcelona um, to swap De Jong and Greenwood? No, I think that's BS, but um, I do think it was about player sales. Shall I show you my tweet, actually? Because I, I'm actually going to get into that story. Uh, I don't think it was necessarily about Greenwood or about De Jong or about one specific player, but I think it was a purpose of selling players. And I don't think it was anything to do with De Jong, but I think there would have been some potential interest in Greenwood there. Now, this is what I tweeted. And this is this isn't news. This is just a theory to clarify. This isn't me reading out mass news. But I did say this. Omar Brada and Ashworth are on gardening leave. So Man United will have to make use of Murta and Co for the time being. Good to see Murta has been making trips to Saudi Arabia and now Spain, meeting with Barcelona and Madrid officials. Ineos understands the importance of offloading players and wants to start business quickly. Reports suggest Murta went to Saudi Arabia to make it known that Manchester United were open to offers for Anthony Sancho, Casemiro, and Baran. According to reports, not that those players, all those players would go to Saudi Arabia, but Murta did go to Saudi Arabia and say, look, we've got players that need offloading. I wouldn't be surprised if Ineos is saying, look, Dan Ashworth and Omar Barada can't work yet. 
I need you to go to Spain. I need you to establish relationships. I need you to make it sh clear, like, these are who is, who's for sale. That could be Greenwood. That could be Mejbrain. I said, I assume player sales were being discussed in Spain with many reports suggesting Greenwood was one of the many names mentioned. I don't think it was, it was a meeting to talk about a specific player. I think it was a meeting to establish relationships and talk about players that could be available. And it was said, obviously, it's Manchester United. And when it comes to the chance of the windows, we seem to be a disaster, particularly at offloading desperate. Deadwood. However, it's crucial we sell the summer, and I think Ratcliffe knows this. And I wouldn't be surprised if behind the scenes, Man United is telling you know I'm a, Man United sort of Ratcliffe is telling John Murta to get out there, establish relationships. So you know it might be easier for us to sell ahead of summer because what we do in, in the summer and how much we spend ultimately depends on sales. Ultimately depends on okay how well do we get our business done? And we know that Manchester United wants to sell a lot of players. So I don't think it's got much to do with De Jong. There was some rumours actually that the meeting had things to do with Jules Conde, but again, not much reliability in that, although we are looking at centre-backs, so you never know. I think it was probably Man United saying that these players are for sale, Barcelona saying these players are for sale, but there was also um, representatives of the CAA agency there that represent Mouai, represent Varane. They also had talks with Madrid representatives. He didn't just go to Barcelona to talk to Deco. The Madrid representatives were there. He was talking to a lot of big clubs in Spain, maybe about Greenwood, maybe about players he wants to sell, but it looks like John Murta and Hargreaves have been going about a fair bit, and Ineos want to get action done quick. Ineos also know that United slow in the chance of the window and one of the reasons they're slow is because they don't sell enough players so they miss out on key targets because they don't have the money there's FFP trouble like any also sort of saying well John Mert's here because we can't bring an Asper from Barada yet so we're going to utilize John Mert to get him to work establish relationships and see if we can actually get things organized so we can act quickly this summer and have the players in by pre-season which would be massive and which would be really really important bigger everybody in the chat please do the like button of course subscribe down below no is good but every manager will have problems with these players 100 percent. i think you know we're talking about how much Ronald ten Hag and the brilliant football he played at ajax and he's come to united and played bad football a lot of people want nargusman because he plays amazing football but he could come to united and play bad football the new kit looks fire the new kit's all right but i'm, I'm waiting to see a better picture because last time there was a new kit released it was proved not to be real as well. United need to offload Deadwood recruit well and give Tenal a go. And I agree. I agree with you there, Craig. I think for me, the most important thing that Manchester United can do this summer is say, look, you know, Tenal played brilliant football at Ajax. He played attacking football at Ajax. As Alex said, Ajax had plus 80 goal difference in the area division in Tenal's last season. They were playing the best brilliant attacking football ever. Tenal's come to United playing crap football. Ragnik came to United playing this attacking, expansive football, had to play bad football because of the players we have available, because we, pla we lack players with technical qualities able to play good football. So the only way we get results is playing bad football. So while I like the sporting manager, while I like Niles, but then I think they play brilliant football, my fear is they come to United and they play bad football, which is for me why it's so much more important that we sell players. And the better, the better we sell players and the more players we sell, the more money we have to spend in the summer and maybe we'll have the resources there to then buy people to play good football with as well. Nagelsmann inherited flicks deadly Bayern Munich and made them team without fear factor. To be fair, I think Nagelsmann was sacked at Bayern for no reason. I think he deserved a lot more time, to be fair, as well. I'm not sure what, what really went down there. But I want to dive into a few more stories, a few more reports, a few more news going about on the manager front. And hopefully Tenor was given time and indications suggest that Ineos might be giving Tenor time after what reportedly was said to Tenor. There's an indication that he's probably going to be given time. But this was also info on the manager situation and who is on the list. It was said that Graham Potter is one of the names being considered for the Manchester United job, job should they sack Eric Tenag. It was also said that Sedan is likely to be on a long list of six to seven managers' um, options to replace Eric Tenag should he be sacked. And Inter manager Simon Inzaghi was apparently approached by Man United in December, but he remains committed to, of course, Inter. Now, what's interesting is some source, and, it's, and I, again, I would take this with a pinch of salt because it's not a tier one source. It's not the most reliable source of information out there. But the fact that there is a source coming out and saying, did you know that there was contact between Man United and managers back in December could be a suggestion that Ineos have known from the start that they don't want Tenog to be the long-term manager. And they have contacted, contacted Inzaghi. Or it could just be fake news because it's not come from a reliable outlet. Now, what is being rumoured about is that apparently Ineos have had conversations with uh, Sedan and that Blanc had a conversation with Sedan to see if he wants to come to United with Sedan being Blanc's dream candidate. Now, if Manchester United have decided to sack 10 arms, and I'm sure Sedan is on the list, he's got a good relationship with Blanc, he's been looked at before, what he did at Real Madrid, I'm sure Sedan is on the list. But I don't think Sedan goes to United. I think if United are, you know, in a really good place and we finish second, we're in a tight race and we need that manager to take us to the next level, maybe Sedan takes on the job. 
but I don't think he goes to United. He doesn't speak English. He's rejected us in the past. And I know that Dan Ashworth rejected us three years ago when Sudan rejected us three years ago. And Dan Ashworth now wants to come to Manchester United. We'll get into that in a second because we've got a new structure in place. He's going to get freedom and all of that. But I feel like I would be very surprised if Sudan did come to United, despite United's approach, despite him being on the list. Even if Tenog sat, I do think that Graham Potter... Deserby, Nalbusman, Amarim are more reliable options. And you've got to remember that Liverpool are looking for a manager. Chelsea might be looking for a manager as well. So um, even if we are sacking um, Tenor, we might not get our first choice manager. Our first choice manager might be Deserby if we sack Tenor, but Liverpool might go get Deserby because Xabi Alonso is reported to go to Bayern Munich. There's, there's a lot of sort of things and feelings up in the year as well we got everybody in the chat please do hit the like button southgate next united manager that was a report but that report was not true um uh, thank god I, I don't want southgate as the next man united manager there's something badly wrong at chelsea before he got there and after he left i think with chelsea again they're just sacking managers but actually i think other things need to change at chelsea before they second up a manager i see elements of what klopp's trying to do i think i've seen more from klopp this season than 10 of despite man united being ranked above Chelsea, I do think that we've seen elements of what Klopp's trying to do, but doesn't have the players. With Tenor, we just see that he knows he hasn't got the players, so he's playing crap football to try and get a win as well. A uh, tricky decision for Ineos, um, if we keep Eric Tenor, we'll have to extend his contract because having a good manager in his last year isn't good. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but um, I think Ineos will be seeing it as like, well, we, we're taking a risk keeping Tenor for one, one more year. We'll renew his contract towards the end of that year if we think he's worth it. Uh, with Man United, you might want to stay, you might want to be part of the project, because if you're a manager and you're starting something good, and let's say Tenag is a good window, and this time in a year we're looking on track to finish second or third, we're pushing City, we're pushing them for a good place, and Tenag finally has good structure around them, he might say, yeah, I'll put pen to paper for a new deal at United. Let's continue on to a few other bits and pieces. So we've got a few stories to talk about, we've got a few stories to report about, there's Lots of interesting news going about. And one of the stories sort of going about, again, is De Zerbi's first choice. Now, I, I personally don't think that will, that will, um, I personally don't think anyone knows who first choice is. I wouldn't be surprised if it's De Zerbi because Omar Barada wanted him at Man City. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised because he's got a relationship to Dan Ashworth. I wouldn't be surprised if De Zerbi was first choice. But I think when, when reports are saying one week Potter's first choice, the next week De Zerbi's first choice, the next week this place is first choice, I, I just don't think the media really know. You know what? One week we were getting told that Qatar was winning and then the next week we were getting told that Sergio Mactiv was winning. Um, yeah. Do you hear yourself? I zoned out. I, I, I zoned out. I was, there was about, there was about a, 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 a two-minute period about two minutes ago, guys, why I did zone out. So I do apologise if I was chatting absolute rubbish. I did zone out for a second there. My head just went for five minutes of falling asleep. So hopefully I'm making sense. Making sense. If, if I've just said a load of blob, you go for a minute? I do apologise. But basically, we're saying Hope Tenog was given another year, but Sedan, Sadat, Deserby, Nargelsman, Amarin, Potter, they're all on the list. Um, different reports are saying that this is the first choice. Different reports are saying that's the first choice. Different reports are saying that Tenog will be given time. Some reports are saying they've already sacked him. Some reports are saying they will likely sack him. I don't think the mainstream media actually know is what I'm trying to say. I don't think they really, really know. And I think it's guesswork. Ineos need to appoint other execs while we wait for Ashworth and Murta uh, need to be put aside. Uh, uh, well, if Ashworth Merton needs to be put aside already, look, I, I agree to an extent. I think, look, if we've got Merton here and we've got him employed, then we've we just got to utilize it because you've got Dan Ashworth coming in to do his role. But it's almost like, can we bring someone in to somewhat do that role that's, that's better than Merton? I get that. Now, going into Ashworth and going into the latest on Dan Ashworth, this was said. It was said that Dan Ashworth and Manchester United is closer. The deal being done is described as when rather than if. If United pay up, he'll be placed, he'll be in place for summer. If they don't, the priority will be to have him starting September 1st. So this is sort of the latest on Dan Ashworth. It's basically been said that, look, Dan Ashworth to Manchester United is a done deal. It's just a matter of when, not if. There's gardening leave. There's a feeling that United and Newcastle will eventually agree a fee because Newcastle won't want to pay for him to do nothing for a year and a half. Um, but Man United aren't going to pay 20 million gardening leave. So there's a feeling that Eventually, something will be agreed between Manchester United and Newcastle for Ashworth. The deal is done. Ashworth said he wants to join. He is on gardening leave. It's a matter of where. It's not a matter of Ashworth. It's a matter of 
it's a matter of when he will either start this summer or he'll either start September 1st and we might have to go in with uh, Murta, which I don't want to happen so hopefully we can get it done before but if we do go in with Murta, he's likely to have Omar Barad around him and multiple people in recruitment like Doogie Freeman which will make it better interestingly apparently Manchester United did approach Michael Edwards but he did turn us down and he did return to Liverpool he's got loyalty to Liverpool which is a shame because imagine taking Michael Edwards off Liverpool that'd be great there is reports that Michael Elise is the only current target that Ineos are pursuing right now but they are interested in Jared Bramthwaite as well that was other news going about but obviously Ashworth is essentially done Ashworth will not be involved in transfers over the summer I think that will set us back hopefully we can just get the deal done so Ashworth is involved in transfers over the summer because I think not having Ashworth is a big loss um, because we know how poor we've been Omar Brada coming in is great and um, it was also mentioned that Man United sources are downplaying that anything imminent is for Doogie Friedman but if we have Omar Brada and Doogie Friedman working with John Murta it's better than having John Murta and Richard Arnold doing it which happened last season um because Ashworth isn't known necessarily for his recruitment work but Ashworth as a sport director is known for the structures he puts in place and the organization he puts in place that is not the end of the world if we have Omar Barada and someone like Judy Friedman doing deals but we haven't actually hired that recruitment sec now but I think it's for me it's very important that we try and get the Ashworth deal we don't bring him in September 1st we bring him in for the window it was said that Ineos want multiple recruitment experts at senior level at United Obviously, Dan Ashworth is done. Omar Barada is done. Omar Barada will start in, in June, July. Dan Ashworth will either start this summer or September, hopefully this summer. Uh, but they said that we do want to bring in multiple people in recruitment, maybe not just the Doogie Friedman, but maybe three or four names in recruitment. Alex B says, Wilcox, when we have a head of recruitment, it could take over from Murta in the meantime and need those appointments 100%. And, but apparently, um, obviously, Wilcox is by, again, Wilcox is reportedly not done, but basically done as well. Um, it's, it's difficult because there's a... Omar Barada can't start till June. Ashworth is done, but he's on gardening leave, so we don't know when he will join. Uh, Wilcox apparently is expected to be done, but not officially done, and he'll have gardening leave. So it's so difficult because I don't really want Murta negotiating deals, but I think Ineos might be in a position where they just have to get Murta negotiating deals until they can bring people in, and hopefully they can bring people in in time for the start of that summer and not rush it too much. Yes, Wamba Saka's back. Yes, Hoyland's, Hoyland's back. Um, and Mason Mount will be back soon, which is great. Um, it is worrying that Mason Mount hasn't even had 10 starts for United and is only returning from injury. Uh, yeah, that is very, very worrying. And I think he will be a little bit, um, what's the word? Um, what's not rough? Rusty as well. So I think Mason Mount will need a few games to get back up to scratch. And hopefully Tenag gives him those games because Tenag was playing with Tomlin and Eriksen over him even when he was fit as well. Uh, which was a bit worrying. But going back to the news, going back to the reports, it was said that Manchester United are downplaying that anything is imminent for Doogie Friedman. Doogie Friedman is someone that we're looking at for the, the rec recruitment role. We're also looking at Julian Ward, who was previously at Liverpool for the recruitment role. Uh, but apparently nothing is imminent, but we do know that United want multiple experts at senior level. Going into other news, I do want to talk about sort of a few transfers and a few stories going about in a second as well. If they bring Potter, they'll be right at United. I don't think they'll be right, but I think it will be disappointing sacking Tenard for Potter. Like, I think Graham Potter's a decent manager, but I don't think it's really worth sacking Tenard for Potter. If Jürgen Klopp came to Ineos and said, I want to manage Man United next season, and they sacked Tenard because Jürgen Klopp wanted to come to United, which isn't going to happen, I get that. Um, I want Tenard to stay. I want Tenard to be given another year, but if there's someone like Jürgen Klopp there that wants the job, fair enough. But if it's you sacking Tenard for Graham Potter, I'm like, is, is Graham Potter really better than Tenard? Like, what Graham Potter did at Brighton was great, but what Eric Tenog did at Ajax was was absolutely incredible and, and, and just as great. Um, and, 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 you know, Potter failed at a big club, which, which was a poor, unstable environment like United. But Tenog did succeed in his first season at United in a poor, unstable environment. He did better. Last season, Tenog was doing a lot better than Potter with a lot lot worse squad and a lot less money. De Zerbi, Tuchel, Flick, Nagelsmann, Xavi, Alonso and Sargi and Amarin all available for the right price. Plenty of options for United despite Liverpool, Barcelona and Chelsea looking for managers. I agree there's plenty of options um, out there and I think the, some of the options are decent but some of the options don't 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 always like make my head go, hmm. I'd I, I like Tenard to be given another year but I, I can understand if Ineos sat Tenard because of how poor the footballers we've been playing. Mount was dropped for a bit before he got injured. He has a lot to prove, 100%. And I think there's a good player in Mount and I think he will be a good sign for United but... 
it, you know, the way it started has been disappointing, which isn't necessarily his fault. But I do think we shouldn't have gone for him. We should have gone for him on a free this summer. I do think we needed more of six. I feel like it was a waste of money this summer as well. Um, Ernie says this, you need to focus on developing a dominating style of play rather than results for now. Uh, Tenor was digging out results, but he's doing so with horrible football. And I get that. And I think that's something Ineos might be looking at. They might be saying, look, we want to see a little bit of what you're trying to do. I get that you have to play this bad football to get results. And if you play good football, we're going to start losing that like, 4-0 went for the second game of the season when we try to play expansive football. But I do think reportedly Ineos are looking at the style of play and we're not having that, which is worrying. Now, interestingly, we know that Murta went to Barcelona and Ramar, they were saying that Barcelona are not currently working on the deal for Greenwood despite Murta going there. But there has been some interesting reports going about. Some reports are saying that United officials have been travelling around Spain to try and sell Greenwood. Uh, we also know that... Um, sort of Man United have been to Saudi Arabia as well. Man United officials have been going around trying to sell players, not just Greenwood, but many players, see if they can get money. I believe Man United officials are establishing relationships. I believe Murta has been sent out because Jim Ratcliffe said, look, we need to sell people seriously, Murta, this summer. I think Murta has been sent out to try and establish some relationships, try and build some relationships to put us in a better position to sell. I don't necessarily think anything was agreed or set in stone in those meetings. I think it was, look, we're going to be selling Mason Greenwood. Look, Casemiro is going to be for sale. Moran's going to be for sale. Anthony Sancho, these players are going to be for sale. We want to sell them, build relationships, make it known because we've got to sell and we can't buy until we sell and the focus as soon as it hits the chance of the window open is selling 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 offloading the deadwood in your spot like 11 12 players gone i don't think that will happen we've never had the big clear out we say we're going to have every single year and this would be a good chance to get money Continuing on another news, it was said this about Murta that United Director of Football John Murta and Matt Harveys have been to Madrid, they've been to Barcelona, they've been to Saudi Arabia. We're also looking at left backs. I think Man United's priority is centre back, striker, right wing. They're the three priorities, followed by DM, followed by backup left back, potentially followed by another centre back, depending on who's sold. Maybe if loads of midfielders sold, it's another midfielder. Maybe if Ahmad, Kalishi, Sancho, and Anthony will go. It's, it's, it's another winger. There's reports that Anthony might not be able to go because his investigation is still ongoing and no team will be interested in buying Anthony. So I wouldn't be totally shocked if Anthony is here next season, if I'm going to be honest with you as well. Um, Mount wasn't dropped. He just never played. Mount should, should be playing every week. Well, he was playing Ericsson and McTominay over Mount for bits, which I couldn't quite get my head around, to be honest. Um, I would have liked to see Mount give him more of a chance, uh, 100%. And so uh, what people they're playing horrible football um, and haven't got the players. Yeah, I think for me, we are playing bad football, but we don't have the players that are capable of playing good football. And we've had so many injuries that it's hard to play a style of football. So there is sympathy for Tenag there. And I think Ineos will know that. He played brilliant football at Ajax, had a decent first season playing OK football. And um, this season it's gone down the drain through injuries and limited players as well. Um, look, big up everybody in the chat. I do want to thank everyone for watching today's live stream. But I've got to wrap up today's live stream because... Got to, got to go and be places. Um, so it's only going to be a short live stream. I've got a video coming out tonight, which is a tactical video. So do subscribe for that. Uh, big up everybody. Um, left back isn't happening. Real Madrid have three years on them. Yeah, I think I, I think left backs all rumours. I'm not sure what the left back situation is, but I will do a video on that near the time when we know. Uh, but I think a lot of the players we're linked with aren't too reliable. I think Elise is reliable, most reliable. I think there's definitely something in Tordobo, Bramthwaite. I'm going to do banana stories, but I think a lot of players we're linked to, you know, you have to sort of look at it and go, I don't see that happening. Anyway, smash a like, smash a subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.